Well, it seems my favorite coffee times are on Sunday. It's Sunday. Welcome to coffee time. I'll just have a cup of coffee, then I'll go. Four topics, plus my rambling. Topic one, the abject failure of the two-minute drill. I don't know if I'm going to do more. I had a, a bunch of them planned, but I've never had unwatched videos like those couple that I put out. Obviously, there's not a lot of interest there. There's no point in me doing them if people aren't interested in it. I'm not going to keep doing them hoping it catches on. If you don't want to see it that way, then <laughs> there's no point in doing them. So I'll just put on the shelf the topics that I had planned and bring them out maybe into coffee time and go over them that way. Coffee time seemed to be a pretty popular video, on the other hand. And speaking of popular video, I just did the... Cuenca Retrospective, which has been a very popular video. Interesting that I don't get comments on it, but I get an awful lot of views that kind of stick around. So I like doing that video. It brought back a lot of good memories. And I did get a couple comments that said it was nice to see Sandy again, but it was, it was a stroll down memory lane for a lot of us. Now I've also got another Cuenca video coming out probably tomorrow, maybe Tuesday at the latest. Now why a couple Cuenca videos in a row? Well, for two reasons. First of all, I pulled a muscle, a calf muscle in my leg and I've been kind of hobbled. So I'm really not out walking around. I've tried a couple times. It's, uh, it's very painful and uh, it's just not conducive to going out and, and doing video. And the other reason is the cell phone. Uh, the camera is just crappy in it. Let me talk about the cell phones for a minute. As you may know, my wonderful cell phone, my Samsung Note 5 that I've had for five years of flawless service, never had to reboot it, never had an issue with it. But the battery has been getting bad, been getting bad. Eventually, uh, last week, it just fried. There's nothing. It won't turn on. It's just the battery just smoked itself. It got extremely hot. At the same time, my internet went out. So I was without communication for a number of days, five days actually in total, hiking down to the internet office every day. And that's another story. However, I did go out and pick up a cheap cell phone because I have a kit coming, a repair kit for my really good cell phone that someone from the United States who's coming here to Armenia uh, next week very kindly offered to bring down to me. So the kit was $15 and they're going to bring that down to me. And it's a person who actually has a farm here. They live and work in the United States but their family is Colombian and they have a farm here that's essentially inherited. And so they're coming down to check out the farm and they're trying to decide what to do with it. And I had already planned going back maybe a month ago that I was going to go over and do a video at the farm, maybe interview them, look around. It looks like a beautiful place. I couldn't and didn't want to go out and spend a lot of money on another phone when I can get my wonderful phone back, or at least that's the plan. So I got a Huawei. Uh, why did I get a Huawei? Huawei Y5. So I'm looking at all these different phones that are on the lower end and the, the only thing I'm really keying in on is the quality of the camera. And what I read in the specs, it seemed like this would be a reasonable short-term solution and I could go out and use that phone as a video camera like I need to do. I need to be able to pull out of my pocket because my videos are as I'm living my life and you don't carry these big cameras to do that so or at least I don't so I get the phone and what I didn't know is that yeah the specs are all like like it says but it has this thing where it's herky-jerky if you're going across like this it kind of stops and then catches up over here so it's it's unwatchable 
It's extremely disappointing, particularly since I chose it specifically as a fill-in. The specs are all true. The camera is crap. And so th that was one of the reasons. The other reason was the pulled calf muscle. Which brings me to another topic that I've never really addressed. and I think I should spend a little time on it. I believe this will be important to many of the video viewers. I didn't just pull this calf muscle out of the blue. Now, if you recall, going back over three years ago when I first went to Ecuador, it was right after being sick, right after being bedridden for a long period of time, being completely out of shape. I mean, I was like a big bowl of gelatin. I was 100 pounds heavier than I am now. I was a mess, and I couldn't walk 15, 20 feet. I mean, when you have absolutely no muscle tone from top to bottom because you've just been laying in bed, uh, it, takes, it takes a long time to build that back up. So I forced myself, and the doctor said, take it easy, take it easy, but I had been in bed for so long, I was frustrated, wanted to be mobile. So I pushed myself when I felt like I couldn't go anymore. You know, it just kind of harkened back to those Marine Corps days. When you can't go anymore, that's when you go more. And that's what I did. And what I did was tweak little muscles here and there. I talked to the doctor. He said, well, that's one of the reasons I told you that. That's going to happen. Your body's kind of breaking itself back in. In some cases, it's, it's actually in some ways good for you, but it's going to be extremely painful. And it could be a reoccurring thing if you're not careful. Well, all the tweaks all over the place would go heal up, go away, usually three to five days, just kind of chill a little bit, putter around the house, and then I'd be okay. But this calf muscle has reoccurred probably every six or seven months, eight months, nine months, a handful of times since the first time. I haven't had a problem in quite a while, but I'm just walking up the sidewalk, nothing strenuous, nothing hard. It hadn't even been a long walk. I'd only been maybe a mile at that point. And I heard this little pop and I could hear, I could feel a bump on the, on my calf and I, I've already been through it. I knew what it was. So I hobbled back. They're very painful. I hobbled back and I put some uh, lotion on it and I put a nice bandage around it. That usually helps. And I just, I stayed off it, but I stayed off it as much as I could. Now I did have to go down, this happened during the internet, to, towards the end of that. And I had to go, I think, two more times down to the office. So it's maybe four or five blocks, approximately. So I had to make that walk. So I walked down and I walked back, but I, I really took it easy as much as possible. And then for a number of days after that, I stayed off it. Well, yesterday, um, there's a couple here that are from Ecuador, live, live in Ecuador, originally from the United States, but they've been in Ecuador, I think they said eight years, in other places, Costa Rica and Guatemala and who knows where, they know where. But they're here visiting Colombia and they love it, by the way. Uh, they're very impressed with Armenia. We, we talked at length about how amazing the people are here and how friendly they've been. Perfect strangers that helped them find an apartment. That's for another story, I guess. Here I am rambling. I would have thought you'd like that two-minute drill. <laughs> okay, maybe you like the rambling. So yesterday I go out and um, we went to lunch not far from here. And it was hurt. It, it was half as bad as when it first happened, but it hadn't healed yet. So it's never taken this long. So I just have to, I really have to kind of cool it. Um, get back on the bicycle, which doesn't put a whole lot of strain on it. And um, just try to get it back into shape. But what's the topic? What's the point of this? Well, I had a particular situation where it was expected that would happen. And prior to my illness, I was a pretty healthy, strong, fit, young looking guy. And I still probably don't look my age, but you know, I'm working back in. I, 
I have half the strength I used to have. Which caused me to think about what about people that are coming that are feeling their age, that have issues, you know, they get up out of the chair and they groan because it's it's really tough to get up out of the chair and I mean we all have some days like that. But there's people where that's happened. Or if you've lived in the United States for a period of time and you've kind of fallen into a sedate lifestyle, you watch a lot of TV, you don't walk much because hey you got a car, you drive everywhere. When you come to a place like Ecuador or Colombia they're walking societies. Everything is structured differently. Availabilities are very different. Transportation is different. So you find yourself, whether you want to or not, you're going to be doing a lot of walking. Now the fantasy of it is, I'm going to go there, I'm going to start walking, and I'm going to get in really good shape, and I'm going to feel better than I've felt in years, and it's going to be a fountain of youth. And yes, that can be true, at least to an extent. However, it doesn't come without pain. It doesn't come without suffering. It doesn't come without things like tweaking and pulling little muscles here and there. So you want to be prepared for that. Don't think you're just going to come and go out and walk and that'll be the end of it. It may be for three days, five days, two weeks. But at some point, these things are going to catch up with you more in the beginning and less as you go along. But you're not in high school anymore. You're not in college. You're not in the military. You're not in sports. You know, if you're of retirement age and things do change. So take that into account. Also take into account the situation where you may hobble yourself for could be a couple weeks at a time. There's a number of things that can happen in this situation. There's obstacles that you're not familiar with. The ground can be uneven, sidewalks can have pitfalls, you can twist your ankle, you can break your ankle. There's inclines. If you don't remember, go back and look at some of the videos, one in particular I did when I was uh, staying in Manizales, about inclines like this. It takes a toll on you. So imagine if you're actually injured and you're trying to get to a store and you have these challenges, you have these obstacles, and if you, you don't have a car, this is what you're going to face. So here you are, house ridden, what do you do? I need to get this, I need to do that. So you want to have backup plans for that. Now, where I am in Armenia, virtually everything you can imagine can be delivered at your doorstep. Even the coffee shop on the first floor of this building, I pick up the house phone and they'll, they'll run up a cup of coffee if I, if I so desire, maybe with a Buñuelo. It doesn't matter how much it is, I could spend 30 cents and they're going to run upstairs and bring it to me. Well, that's a real nice feature and don't think, it, I didn't consider, well, what if I get sick again? What if I, like in Cuenca, where I had pneumonia so many times, what if I get that here and I just can't even get out of bed for a while? What do I do? Well, I'm in a building that'll bring me lunch. But beyond that, everything in Armenia and almost anywhere in Colombia can be brought to your house. If I needed a two by four, they'll deliver it to the house. If I need food, if I need groceries, whatever it is. Now you need some language skills for that. The apps don't do it completely. Particularly if you're ordering groceries, you call up and you, or you use your app and you order all your groceries, but invariably they call up and we don't have this and this and this and what do you want for substitution and you need some level of conversation skills if you want to get those groceries. Otherwise they'll just omit it and bring you what they do have and it'll be a lesser amount and you didn't get what you needed. Because if they can't talk to you to, to work out a substitution then it becomes zero. So language skills are, are important, but you already know that and uh, of course you're working on that but these challenges come up that are certainly not insurmountable and would never never have and never will slow me down and hopefully you feel the same but you can't just sit and complain about it it's an issue you have to confront it but the best thing you can do is plan for it people that'll come over and give you a hand or uh, 
check up on you, make sure that you have what you need, maybe make a grocery run for you. It's important when you first land in a place that you arrange things. Now, 20 different countries outside of the United States, lived in three countries outside of the United States, three years plus in Japan, three years in Ecuador, and over a number of times, several times over a year in Colombia, plus all of this travel, and some of the travel was extended travel, a month in the Philippines, things like that. And almost entirely alone, almost entirely solo travel. Lots of different languages. It never bothered me, it never fazed me. I'm just kind of built that way. It, I'm not intimidated by those things. But a lot of people are, particularly if they have no experience traveling. I grew up traveling. When I grew up, before and after the poverty that I went through, we were one of those station wagon families. I remember we had a 19-something or a 50-something Rambler station wagon. And our vacations in the summer would be pile in and it had a third seat and the rear window down. You get exhaust, but nobody thought about exhaust in those days. And we would drive, and I've been to almost every state in the Union. And when I got older, I got to Alaska. But I, traveling was, was in my blood. And of course, when you become an adult, traveling outside the borders becomes something. So it's second nature to me. That I recognize that's not for everybody. But it should be, it's an eye-opener how did I survive without having language skills being alone in these countries? I learned right away the first thing you do is you make friends. They don't have to be English speaking, but somehow, some way, you find somebody that seems like they're trustworthy, that seems like they're compatible with you, it seems like they would make a good friend, and you intentionally make friends with them. Now here I am, an introvert, here I am uh, with hermit tendencies, but I know enough to go out and make friends right away. Now, is that cold-blooded? Am I making friends just for the purpose? No, I'm making friends to make the friends, but I also am aware that you need friends. You know, if you don't have perfect language skills, then you need people to fall back on. What would I have done how could I do these videos if when I first arrived here in Armenia and they wouldn't give me an a internet contract if I didn't have a friend who voluntarily stepped up and did the contract for me so I could have internet. It, the saying is it pays to have friends and it does literally pay to have friends. So you intentionally make a point. You don't put it off. It should be one of the first things that you do so that when you go shopping they can guide you. Here we've got all kinds of supermarkets. I covered in a video, what was there, 10, 12 different supermarkets exist in Colombia and in Armenia. I think there's seven or eight main supermarkets like the Ralph's or Whole Foods or these major brands. But what's the best one to go to? What days are the best to go? Who has the best of what? Where can I find XYZ? If you have friends, you just say, hey, you want to go shopping with me? Uh, you know, walk me through it, show me. How do I come up with so much information for these videos? How did I do it in, in Cuenca, uh, in, in Hiron, in Vilcabamba? How did I do that? I didn't just sit there and make it up, and I didn't have enough experience at one point to be able to give any insight. But I had friends. I had friends who lived there their entire life that I would, I would work through these things with for my own sake, and I would share that information. So I would say, hey, how do I do such and such and such? What's the best way? And then we would actually do it. I would have that experience. I would see the contrast of a different um, situation and what I could have run into. So I would explore that and then I could come back and make a video and say, hey, here's what I found. Which is also why I always have this disclaimer, these are my experiences, my opinions, years may be different. So if I come up with something, it's not wrong, 
it's just it's what I run into and if I ran into it there's a really good chance that's what you're gonna run into and that's what makes these videos useful and valuable to you if you're coming here pay attention you may not come across things exactly the same as me but there's a pretty good chance you probably will last thing I'll bring up was the last thing the last thing well this is be the actual last thing keep in mind that I've got videos that go back we're in my fourth year of doing videos so a lot of these videos go back to a time when things were one way and today it's another way it's not that those videos are wrong for their time they were accurate but for today they may not be as true or valid anymore they become historical no longer current so keep that in mind it doesn't mean that there's no value in them but there can be differences I was called out just recently by somebody who had just moved to Cuenca and said all oh, your videos are crap and you're just it's absolutely not true and my experience is well what they did was they went back several years and watched videos about a couple topics that actually don't exist anymore and I will I will cover that in an upcoming uh, video they were accurate at the time but times do change I mean hey the Tramby is actually up and running now right who would have thought I mean that went on year after year after year with problems after problems but it's actually finally come to pass so that's it for coffee time today I hope you enjoy the next Cuenca video and by the time that's out and viewed I should be back into the mode where I have my actual phone and camera and can hit the road again give me a little time to heal my leg so it all should come together about the same time and we'll get back to doing something more than just this talking head so thank you for watching we'll see you soon if you like this channel and you want to support it see the comment section down below you can contribute through patreon gofundme or direct through google pay if you're planning a trip or a move to the coffee area of columbia contact me from the email as always subscribe and like and thank you for watching